Aaron Gobra, Discovery, happy St. Patrick's Day. And Ohio Gazamas to Koichi, I hope you enjoy your last day on the shuttle. Happy St. Patrick's Day, uh, and can, uh, thank you, Janice, and I'd uh, like to thank the Jackson support the team members for selecting the nice song for, for us, and it's uh, another wonderful morning in, in uh, orbit. I'm looking forward to going to our new base in space later today. Jackson, CN team, no one, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This song is really good. It's really good. Today is the day of the docking. And the new home of the new home. Thank you, Janice. You're welcome, Koichi. Your execute packet should be printing. If you could, please change out the two image cards in the KFX machine, and you are go for Outlook. Copy that. Thanks. This morning's wake up song, chosen especially for astronaut Koichi Wakata, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. That song is called Radio Exercise. It's a, a traditional Japanese song that is played for uh, the children to exercise to. Uh, this version was performed by the Tokyo Broadcast Children's Choir. This is Mission Control Houston. Live views from the International Space Station now in orbital night as it's just making its way over the southern Pacific Ocean, uh, just off the east coast of Australia. It's being uh, closely followed by the space shuttle, which is uh, closing in for a docking later today. All the rendezvous operations now underway and uh, things going smoothly for the shuttle crew as well as the International Space Station crew, which are preparing for their visitors in eight days of joint docked operations. Station Tally Ho, Houston Copies Discovery. This is another view from the uh, orbiting complex looking back towards the Discovery, uh, closing in. Two are expected to dock over Jakarta, Indonesia, just a few hours from now. We're about two and a half minutes from a uh, burn that will uh, further refine shuttle Discovery's approach to the International Space Station. Alpha Discovery on the big loop, com check. And Discovery, this is Alpha. We have you loud and clear, and what a beautiful thing it is. Hi, Sandy. We've got you loud and clear. Got a beautiful view of the station from 30,000 feet. Pretty huge, isn't it? But asymmetric. Not for long. Houston Station on two. Yeah, go ahead, Mike, on two. Yeah, I just wanted to let you know we're uh, tally ho on the uh, shuttle. We've never seen such a beautiful sight. It's awesome. Very good, very good news. You're watching a live view from the International Space Station, looking down as Space Shuttle Discovery is uh, tracking underneath. Of just a few minutes from the intersection with the R-bar, the position directly below the International Space Station from which it will perform the rendezvous pitch maneuver. The two vehicles now just over 1,700 feet apart, continuing to close in at a rate of 2.5 feet per second. Discovery Houston on the big loop. You are go for the RPM. Discovery copies. Go for the RPM. Alpha and Houston. Discoveries initiate the RPM. Two, one, mark. An orbiter is initiating RPM. Discovery Houston on the big loop. We copy. RPM initiate. This is Mission Control Houston. As you've heard, Space Shuttle Discovery now starting with the rendezvous pitch maneuver, a nine minute maneuver uh, with Lee Archambault at the controls as he will uh, rotate the orbiter in a complete backflip.
Expedition 18 astronauts Mike Fink, Sandy Magnus, and Yuri Lonchikov in place in the International Space Station, specifically the Svezda service module. They'll be taking uh, digital photos throughout this entire maneuver. We'll be using digital cameras with 400 millimeter and 800 millimeter lenses to photograph Discovery's upper and bottom surfaces. Discovery in place uh, just about 600 feet below the International Space Station. The two vehicles uh, just off the west coast of South America. In the view now, you can just see as the uh, two vehicles are passing over uh, the coast of Lima, Peru. Good view as Discovery uh, rotating and the underside uh, coming into view. And uh, Fink and Magnus uh, poised with their cameras. They will actually wait for the call for photos to start. And they'll uh, ultimately take several hundred photos in a uh, well choreographed pattern ensuring they get all of the uh, surface areas and those photos will be later downlinked for analysis by engineers on the ground. Alpha Discovery, start photos. Alpha Houston, start photos. At the call, of course, to commence with the photography. The two uh, astronauts will take as many as 300 digital pictures of the shuttle's heat shield. Again, using two different cameras, a 400 millimeter and 800 millimeter lenses that are able to uh, provide resolution up to three inches and one inch, respectively. The photography is one of several techniques used to inspect the shuttle's thermal protection system for possible damage. Alpha Houston, end photos.
This is a view from the International Space Station, again looking down at Space Shuttle Discovery uh, towards the tail end of that rendezvous pitch maneuver, the open payload bay doors in view. The orbiter about 600 feet below the International Space Station. They'll uh, realign that on the R bar and then uh, be poised for the Torva maneuver, position the uh, orbiter in front of the International Space Station and for its final approach phase and docking. Discovery Houston on the big loop. You are go for docking. Discovery copies go for docking. This is a look from the orbiter docking system. The space shuttle now 125 feet in front of the space station. This is a view from Discovery looking back towards the U.S. segment where you can see the pressurized mating adapter, uh, the lower circle and uh, the Harmony module. Crossing horizontally is the uh, truss segment. Another closer look at the space station. At this point on the approach, the shuttle crew members are operating laptop computers processing the navigational data, the laser range systems, and Discovery's docking mechanism. Shuttle Discovery now at 10 feet out and expected to dock in uh, three minutes. and Alpha capture confirmed.
Discovery, Houston on the big loop. Station free drift confirmed. Discovery copies. And on the big loop, Alpha sees that we're in free drift also. Welcome. Welcome to the space station, Discovery. We're glad you're here. Thanks, Mike. Glad we're here also. This is Mission Control. As you heard now, the two vehicles docked. Capture a contact confirmed at 4.19.53 Central Time over the uh, Lake Wells area of Western Australia. The onboard crews as well as the uh, ground control teams now working through their next steps and procedures to ensure uh, proper alignment before uh, proceeding with the hard mate between the two vehicles. But otherwise, the uh, rendezvous and docking to the space station uh, by the book, and uh, again, contact confirmed at 419 Central Time. You're seeing a live view in the International Space Station, Expedition 18, Commander Mike Fink in view in the Harmony module. Uh, we have uh, pressurized the ODS vestibule. You are go to begin leak check. Discovery copy. Thanks. Nice to hear your voice, Koichi san. Good to be here. Shuttle Discovery arriving. And you can see now that the hatches are open at 6.09 p.m. Central Time while the shuttle and station were orbiting about 234 miles above the Southern Ocean, south east of New Zealand. see Commander Lee Archambault in the right-hand corner of the screen. In front of him, Pilot Tony Antonelli in the center. Mission Specialist Joe Acaba behind him in the white shirt. Mission Specialist Koichi Wakata and just floating in, Mission Specialist John Phillips behind him. Looks like Mission Specialist Ricky Arnold coming in holding the camera. All right, to the crew of Discovery, welcome aboard our beautiful International Space Station. We've been waiting for you guys for a while. We understand you have a couple really important things for us. First and foremost, uh, Koichi-san, first long-duration Japanese guy in space ever, welcome aboard. And uh, we also understand you have a truss out there, more power to us, got some spacewalks lined up. We're excited for that. And also, it's always uh, proper and uh, to, to recognize a, a former space station crew member, John, welcome back. It's gotten a lot bigger since uh, we both first flew on, on here. It's great to be back. <laughs> so welcome, Lee. Welcome to your entire crew. We are dang glad to see you. All right. Mike and Snyder be here again a second time uh, for myself and Swanee and John. And uh, we're gl really delighted to join you, Sandy, uh, Yuri. And uh, we got a lot of work to do. We're looking forward to it. But this is a very special moment. So thanks for having us aboard. So let's get to work. <laughs> that was Command Station Commander Mike Fink giving the words of welcome to the seven members of Space Shuttle Discovery's crew, thanking them for bringing the newest 
crew member and also the last segment of the space station's truss that will finish off their complement of solar arrays and provide them enough power to do twice the science. Again, that hatch opening for the two vehicles occurred around 6.09 p.m. Central Time as the shuttle and station were flying over the ocean southeast of New Zealand. Now that they're all inside the International Space Station, the crew is scheduled to go through a safety briefing, making sure everybody is ready to live and work safely at the International Space Station while they're there. And then they'll begin almost right away transferring some of the cargo that Discovery brought inside its mid-deck, as well as the spacesuits that will be worn during Discovery's three spacewalks, and the Soyuz seat liner that will mark the beginning of Mission Specialist Kuichi Wakata's time as a flight engineer at the International Space Station. Crews seen here inside the Harmony node of the International Space Station, which is attached on one end to the pressurized mating adapter that the uh, shuttle docks to. This view you can see on the far left-hand side of the screen, pilot Tony Antonelli. Moving right, mission specialist Koichi Wakata, mission specialist Ricky Arnold, mission specialist Steve Swanson, and com shuttle commander Lee Archambault. Almost in view is also ISS Commander Mike Fink. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, here we are down in the mid-deck, uh, waking up after a good night's sleep. We all slept uh, really well last night, getting used to our new surroundings, and uh, we're going to have a little bit more room down there tonight. Uh, Koichi's moved over, and uh, we'll be able to sleep over in the ISS. Getting a nutritious uh, breakfast packed, uh, ready, and uh, still learning to deal with uh, microgravity. But uh, we have all feeling pretty good and uh, have been eating and sleeping really well. With an assist. New Expedition 18 crew member, uh, Koichi, he's over having some uh, dinner right now on the uh, on, uh, Space Station Alpha in his new home, but uh, uh, we're so happy to be able to uh, deliver Koichi to the Space Station, letting him join the new crew, and uh, we're, we're sorry to see him go. We, uh, we so thoroughly enjoyed having him as a member of STS 119, but uh, and you can tell how, uh, how excited I was about getting into that breakfast this morning as well. required to play with your food. There I am uh, cleaning up my act after uh, a couple of days. Uh, makes you feel real good when you can clean up a little bit and feel like a brand new man. Okay, here we're coming up on an ohms burn and you see the two ohms engines. We're looking aft with the shuttle tails in the middle and in just a little bit you'll see it start to turn red. And the purpose of this burn, of course, was to adjust our orbit for the rod of it. This is a really an awesome sight, and, uh, and of course, where uh, we do feel a G, we're kind of pushed against one wall, but it's nothing like a Earth's gravity. Not, not that strong. So as you can see, this, this is kind of thrilling to see these two rockets firing at it. Tail of the orbiter turning red. Yeah, this was a 12 minute ohms burn, and you're going to get all of it right now. <laughs> A 
malfunction with a bicycle up there, so we had, had to resort to a couple other methods of exercising. And Joe has to do the guns. That's just a must anywhere he goes. And that's for the good Acer training. Right now we are putting the EMUs into the mid deck for docking. Keep putting them out of the airlock. There's another one moving on in. They just fit through the hatch, as you can see, but they're easy to move. As we get close to the station, uh, Swanee and I uh, join on the aft uh, flight deck and uh, power up the uh, APDS, the docking system, and uh, to help us, uh, when we pull up the station and dock to it, it actually captures and uh, pulls the two vehicles together. Okay, we had a successful docking and then uh, time to open the hatches. Uh, really, uh, uh, certainly the high point of the, uh, of the trip at this point, and looking across the hatches are... Uh, Friendly uh, space station crew of uh, Expedition 18 and uh, Mike Fink and company. So it was uh, really great to see those uh, those folks on the other side of the hatch. So we popped the hatches open. Then we had to do a little more uh, uh, reconfiguration with some of our ECLA systems, and then uh, time for the whole crew to. Uh, uh, climb aboard Space Station Alpha for the first time on this trip. And now we're in uh, Space Station Freedom. Sorry, Space Station Alpha. Excuse me. <laughs> And the commander, Mike Fink, is uh, giving us a little welcome and a safety brief. And we shipped uh, Kuichi over, and uh, Spanky put him uh, right to work. And uh, he's uh, just finished up his evening, and as Bruce said earlier, he is uh, having a, having a well-deserved uh, dinner. And uh, 
as we, uh, uh, you know, that's the, that's the end of our tape for tonight. But uh, then, you know, the, our space station crew uh, worked really, really hard on the uh, on, on the uh, UPA and uh, and getting a, a lot of work. They're going to have a lot of hard work this week, and they've already been at it, uh, Mike and uh, Koichi tonight, and uh, just uh, now finished up a little while ago. So they got a lot of hard work ahead of them, and uh, as do we. And we're looking forward to tomorrow when we uh, really get down to business and. Uh, take our payload out of the bay and start the uh, process of handing it off and eventually installing it. So thanks for, again for, uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity tonight to uh, play our little bit of our flight day highlights. It's a lot of fun after a long day, and uh, we appreciate you getting that, uh, the, the uh, film down because uh, we know our families will enjoy them. So thank you very much, uh, Houston. And, Brew, thank you. It was very enjoyable from down here. <laughs>